my screen. Okay. View full screen mode. All right. So welcome back to those of you coming back. We're excited to see you again and welcome to everybody who's new. Um, this workshop is about public space. And just as a little refresher, um, Jorge, you wanna introduce yourself? Yeah, um, so uh, for those that weren't here uh, the last time that we did a meeting, uh, my name is Jorge Rodriguez. I graduated from Conrad High School in 2014. Um, ended up going to a five-year degree program in landscape architecture at A&M and, &A and graduated last um, two years ago. Um, and I'm excited to be here. I work for SWA and um, I've loved it ever since. I kind of want to share a little bit of my insight as to why I love the field. Um, and Sarah? Yeah, thanks. So Jorge and I are colleagues yeah. at SWA, the landscape architecture firm where we work. And I graduated a little earlier than Jorge from Ursuline, which is probably like five miles uh, west of where Conrad is. And I went to college and I studied um, global studies, which was awesome, but I didn't really like all the options that I had for my career. So I went back to school and I got a master's in landscape architecture from UC Berkeley. And I just graduated last year, so I'm pretty new at this still, but uh, Jorge and I both really like working together and working on the awesome landscape projects in our office. Okay, so today's theme, what is public space? So I would love to hear from you guys. Have you heard this phrase before, public space? How do you understand what is public versus, for example, what is private? Has anyone ever used these terms before? I might be cruel and call on people because there's so few of us. Um, is public space just meaning where um, people or like a group of individuals can hang out in a area without being like, um, well, it's like a free space that they can use. Is yeah, it? great, great definition. So the, the, you hit it on the head, Nada. Public space is, pla they're places that are open and accessible to everybody. You don't have to pay to be there. You have a right to be there and everyone has a right to be there. And generally the way that you can determine if a place is public or private is based on who owns it. So who owns the street, for example? Well, it, we all do actually. The, the city, for example, the city of Dallas, they take care of the streets, but how do they get the money to take care of streets and build new streets? taxes. So you guys are too young to pay taxes, but I'm sure all of your parents or grandparents or caregivers pay taxes. Jorge and I pay taxes. So basically, we collectively own these spaces together and we have the right to be there. We have the right to give our opinions about what gets built and how it gets built. And this point is kind of um, aspirational maybe, but as landscape architects, we believe a lot in the democratic functions of public space. So kind of like Nada said, there are places where you can hang out, where you can gather, you can hold events. Like this event um, is from Deep Ellum, a neighborhood in Dallas where during COVID they closed the streets so they could have an outdoor gathering. So this is kind of an example of an event that can happen or an event in a public plaza. Um, public spaces are places where we can celebrate, like for cultural celebrations, if there's a big group, you can have dancing, um, speeches. Sometimes you do have to get permits if it's a big group, but generally speaking, it's places where everyone can gather. We can also use public spaces to protest. I think this is a really powerful dimension of public space since we all have the right to be there. We can use these spaces to express our concerns with society, our concerns with policy. So lots of times demonstrations happen through the streets and they gather at a park or a public space at the end to kind of um, build momentum and, and uh, air our grievances with uh, city officials. It can also be a place to mourn, to speak out and to be heard. So I think at its best, public space offers us a place to do all of these things that are really essential to being human and living in a society with other people. So landscape architects, have both the honor and the responsibility of designing public spaces. 
So I think with that in mind, I wanted to just do a quick little word cloud exercise and see if you guys had any ideas about what public space means. So I talked about, um, let's see, can you see this screen that says Menti? No, I'm on the wrong screen. That's my work calendar. Hang on. <laughs> Oops, let's go back. Uh, stop share. The problem when you have multiple screens hooked up to your computer. All right, I'm just going to throw it over here. All right, so can you see the slide that says menti.com? Yeah. So this is where you go on your cell phone. So go on your web browser, just go to menti.com and you type in this code 82066041. And I'll do it with you guys. Uh, menti.com. So this is just kind of our wake up brainstorm all together. 8206-6041. So we kind of just described what public space is. So I'm interested, can you guys think of any examples of public space? So you can just type it in and click submit and you can submit as many times as you want. Parks, yeah, that's a good one. Parks, streets, that's true. What are some other examples of public space? Nice, White Rock Lake, good one. That's like a public recreational amenity that the city of Dallas owns, which means we all own it. Lakes, definitely. Malls, this is an interesting one because this is where it starts to get tricky. Usually malls are privately owned, but they have public areas where you can hang out if you kind of obey their rules. But since it's owned by somebody private, they can be more picky about who gets to be there. For example, maybe they make you buy food in order to hang out at the food court. So that's a tricky one, but can't there are public spaces in malls. It's a good point. Parks, parks, lakes, plazas. Nice. Who said that one? You're smart. <laughs> so plazas kind of distinguishing from parks, plazas are large open spaces that they're usually paved instead of green. So lots of people can gather and different activities can happen there. Anything else? Ooh, sidewalks, that's a good one. Sidewalks are part of the streetscape. And that's a lot of what Jorge and I design when we design streets is the pedestrian experience on the sidewalks. Okay, nice. That was a good opening brainstorm. So, I'm just going to go back to our presentation and view full screen. So yeah, you kind of hit the nail on the head. Parks are an example of open space. So these are two parks pretty close to Conrad High School. I don't know if you guys have been there. Fair Oaks Park, Harry S. Moss Nature Park. These are places where anybody can go. And Pacific Plaza downtown, we talked about that last week, which is a, it's a public park that we help design in our office or we designed in our office. Also streets. So here's an example of Lower Greenville. So the vehicular right of way is part of the street, but also the sidewalks and the street lamps and the trees and how stormwater flows through the street. Those are all components of public streets where we all have the right to be. Um, Ron Kirk Pedestrian Bridge. This is by my house. I love this public project because it used to be a vehicular bridge. And when they built the new Margaret Hunt Hill Bridge, they turned it into a pedestrian only bridge. So you can kind of see all these marks from where people scoop by. It's a really popular scooter location. But um, this is a public space where anybody can be. And then Fair Oaks Ave. You guys know Fair Oaks Ave really well. Again, this is a public space. Pretty much from this fence to this fence is in the public domain. Uh, plazas and squares are also public spaces. So there's a place downtown called Pegasus Square. I think it's getting renovated right now or the JFK Memorial Plaza. Uh, that's a memorial to President John F. Kennedy who was shot in Dallas. This is a public space. Uh, here's an example from, from Europe. Uh, it's a plaza in Belgium. This is a really common scene in uh, European cultures, not so much in American culture. 
And also public buildings is kind of where the line gets blurred a little bit because we, we do collectively own and have the right to participate in libraries and schools and transit stops. But for public safety reasons, there are usually rules about when you can enter, when you can't enter, what activities you're allowed to do. So usually when there's walls involved, it gets a little trickier and uh, they are still examples of public space. It's just their buildings instead of outside space. So public space, we all own it, but why does it feel sometimes like it's a surprise when, when things happen in the public realm and we're like, oh, who designed that? How did that happen? I kind of want to give you two examples of ways that you can be involved in public space. Um, number one is through public hearings and number two is through public engagement. So the first example, public hearings, is, is like the first step in the process. So this sign called, that says proposed rezoning, the city of Dallas has to post this so that the public knows that when a big change is gonna happen somewhere. So for example, this is the, the photo I took. It's kind of a warehouse building with this really nice mural, but it's mostly a parking lot. So whenever there's gonna be a really big change in the city, like a parking lot is gonna turn into housing or you know, a one-story housing block is gonna turn into a skyscraper. The city has to let people know that there's a change that might impact them coming in their neighborhood. So I'd like took out my phone and I took a little picture of that QR code at the top and it took me to this website, developmentdata.citydallas.com slash zoning. And we're gonna actually go to that website together. This, now this is, this is next level that I'm sharing with you guys. There are lots of adults who don't know how this works. So ask me questions if you don't really understand what, uh, you know, what I'm talking about, but I know you guys are really smart. So I'm gonna, we're gonna just dive right in and explore it together. But uh, let me stop sharing my screen and share different screens, so many screens. Let's see. It is this one. Sure. Okay. No, not that one. That one. Are you guys still seeing my presentation? Dang it. Being so finicky today. Okay, we'll just pull it over here. All right, so remember that QR code, right? That, that QR code that I scanned with my phone. So it took me to this website, which is developmentdata.dallascityhall.com. So once I get to this website, it gives me more information about the project. So I had a case number, that's how you can look this up. And then I read more information about it. So down here at requests, it says PD, which is a planned development create a new plan development for proposed office development. Hmm, that's really interesting. So where there used to be warehouses and parking lots, somebody wants to build an office development. So I might have some opinions about that. You know, if they're gonna build an office development, I might like some housing for my neighborhood. There's not enough housing. Maybe I wanna make sure that the ground floor has, you know, coffee shops and retail, uh, and it's not just a closed office building. So the ground floor has kind of places that I can benefit from and not just workers coming to my neighborhood. So in this part of the public hearing process, you can come down here and look at the hearings. And unfortunately, I'm a little bit late. It gives you these, these hearing dates. The city council hearing was in February, so I'm a little late, but we're gonna look in your neighborhood and see if there are other examples of where you're not too late. But it also gives you the option to email the planner. So the planner who works for the city of Dallas assigned to this is Pamela Daniel. So if, I'm, if I uh, miss the meeting and I wanna get more information, you put in your email and you can just email the planner and say, hey, I missed the meeting. I'd like more information about what's going on in my neighborhood with this project. Okay, so let's go to the general map. And, and look at another example closer to you guys. So we're gonna go to the search map. So this is the map of basically all of the zoning changes that are happening in Dallas. So all of the 
the big projects that are requiring uh, you know, public input because they're pretty big changes. So here's the Central Business District, and this is 75. And this is Park Lane. So this is over by, uh, by Sam Tasby, right? By your middle school. So Park Lane, and there's Ridgecrest. Okay, so let's zoom in until we can get the number. All right, so let's look up. Let's look up this number, Z167378. So we can go to view specific case and type in, or you forgot, Z167. Is it 278 or 378? 378. Okay, and then we go to view case. All right, so we'll read the request. Consideration of appropriate zoning, including use, development standards, and other appropriate regulations. What in the world does that mean? So let's go down to hearings. There's not even any hearing date scheduled yet. So this seems like something that's pretty new, but it also tells you who who is asking for the zoning change. So in this case, um, CPC authorized hearing. So the city planning commission is going to change zoning in your neighborhood. That's very interesting. So they might allow for taller buildings. They might allow for special use um, uses that like they might, um, there's a library that's almost gonna open by the middle school, right? Maybe they're going to change the zoning to include a park. So what you can do is if you're interested in the changes that are happening in your neighborhood, again, you can call this number. It's still so early, they don't even have a planner. So maybe that's a bad example, but let's see what's happening here. One, three, four, two, three, six. E134236. So in this area, which is also kind of by the middle school by Ridgecrest Ridge and Park, this is a planned development for library office and multifamily residential uses. That's really interesting. So the library already got built, but they might want to build some more housing. So you can look up who's asking for this change. DMA Associates is this one. Ah. I'm just gonna Google DMA Associates and see who it is. DMA Companies, Development and Financial Services for Multifamily Affordable and Special Needs Housing. Okay, that sounds pretty good. There might be some more affordable housing and special needs housing in your neighborhood, but if you wanna stay involved, you can email the planner, Megan, Megan Wilmer, and um, ask her when the next hearings are so you can give your opinions on what you want the changes to look like in your neighborhood. Okay, so that, that was really technical, what we just went through, but do you kind of understand the basic point about um, how early in the process, the city, if there's a big change, has to ask people for their opinions before they build new stuff, right? Does that make basic sense? Okay, no, no questions, so I'm gonna assume it does. All right, and then the next kind of public of um, way that you can make your voice heard is in public engagement meetings. So at community meetings, when the project has already been approved, but the design isn't finalized yet. And this is when somebody like me or Jorge might come to a meeting with some initial drawings and ask for your opinions about what you wanna see, especially if it's a public project, like a street project or a park, it's really important to get the opinions of the people who are gonna use these spaces. So some of the types of activities we might do at a community meeting are what we call dot voting. So we might have a bunch of example pictures. This was for a park we did in Arkansas. So we're like, do you wanna be able to touch the water that's gonna flow through the park? Do you like how this image looks? Do you like having vegetation in the stream bed? Do you want an amphitheater? You know, do you want benches? So people could take their little sticky notes. Can you see these little like uh, arrows that are multiple colors? So you can basically vote for things that you wanna see in your park. And we take that input and we change our designs based on the public input. Another thing we might do is ask people to collectively draw our ideas. So this was for that same park project. And at the community meeting, everybody got a bunch of uh, pens and pencils and we came up together with ideas for what should be in the park, like 
this person said they wanted a big fountain and a stream. And we didn't do a fountain, but there is a stream that runs through the park. It's getting built right now. All of these people had the idea to have the stream connecting through the park. So I think being able to draw your ideas is another way that you can communicate your opinions on public space. And um, there's also postcards. So with COVID, it's been hard to meet in person. So what we've started to do is mail out postcards that you can give your opinion without even leaving your house. So for example, this parking lot is now that park that we saw earlier, Pacific Plaza. But before it was built, we asked people, do you live in downtown? Do you work in downtown? Because that's where the park's getting built. And then would you spend your time in the plaza? How would you spend your time? Or who would you spend your time with? You know, what do you want to see in the plaza? And we got a lot of input through this postcard um, exercise, and that changed our design for how the park looked. Another option is online surveys. So Southern Gateway is a project that is going to be a park that goes over the highway. So do you guys know where the zoo is, the Dallas Zoo? It's basically going to connect the zoo to the neighborhood over the highway. So right now they have an online forum to collect opinions from people of what they want to see in that space. So those are just two, um, you know, the two basic ways that it can be um, pretty simple to, to give your opinion on matters of public space. The only thing is the city doesn't make it necessarily easy. You have to really be engaged and notice things that are happening in your neighborhood, like, you know, that sign that I mentioned. I've walked by this sign probably 12 times, and it was just because I was preparing this presentation with you guys that I really noticed it for the first time. So just, you know, being, being, um, being aware of things that are happening in your neighborhood and being curious about them helps give you an avenue for expressing your opinions about them. All right, so enough of me talking. We're gonna actually do an activity now, but before we pick up our pencils, I wanted to just review what we did the first time because there's a couple new people. So can anybody who was here last time give me a refresher of what is a plan, what is a section, and what is a perspective? You guys really understood it last week, so I know you know. Um, perspective is um, making your picture come alive. It's like tricky. Yeah. And the section is, I think you cut it in the middle when you cut it in the middle. And then plan is um, off from the top, the picture from the top. Yep. Awesome. You totally got it. Good job, Ranjita. So she, she totally, totally explained it. But essentially, the plan is from the top. The section is cutting through an object and a perspective is like the 3D realistic view. Yeah. Great description. So just to give to kind of refresh your memory, we talked about Pacific Plaza. So this is the plan drawing of Pacific Plaza. This is a perspective, like that 3D realistic view. And this is a section through the pavilion, right? That cuts through the pavilion that helps you see, you know, how the landform is and how you build the how you build the pavilion. And these are all perspectives. Or like at the Dallas Arboretum, you remember this one? where this was a plan drawing of Arboretum, this is a perspective, 3D view, and the section is like cutting, cutting kind of through or right in front of the stairs of the building. Okay, so before we pick up our pencils, we just have one more activity where we're gonna do our little refresher. Let's see, oh, Alejandra made it too, hey Alejandra. Okay, let's play a Kahoot. You guys still have your cell phones, huh? I'm gonna do classic. So you've done this a million times. Kahoot.it and the game pen is one, two, seven, three, one, five, one. All right, yell it fast. One, two, seven, three, one, five, one. 
Nice. I'm gonna kick myself out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We're waiting on maybe, ah, eight. Okay, is that everybody? All right, let's start. So plan section perspective. And it, your job is just to figure out what type of drawing it is. And you guys already know, so I know this is gonna be easy for you. And it's rapid fire. We're only getting 10 seconds. Is this a plan? Is it a section or is it a perspective drawing? Nice, good job, it's a plan. Awesome. Okay, same thing. It's always the same question. What do you think, plan, section, or perspective? Nice, yell it fast. You're more awake than I am. Whoops, yep, good job. That was a perspective. How about this one? What do you think? Is it a 3D view? Is it cutting through? Oh man, y'all are good. See, you've got this down. How about this one? Plan section perspective. Nice, man, y'all are fast. I'm impressed. Hershey's on fire. How about this one? I also like this activity because it exposes you to more drawing styles. Nice perspective. Everybody got that one. I love it. We're getting the hang of it. Ooh, this one's kind of more complicated. How do you think? Man, all right. Everybody's getting it right. Let's just do a couple more so you can see some of the examples of different drawings but I'm impressed, everybody gets it. How about this one? It's kind of more artistic. Awesome, perspective, nice job. Okay, maybe just two more, because you guys clearly already get it. Perfect, plan drawing. All right, last one. Ooh, this one's even more artsy. What do you think? Nice perspective. I really, I really like all the styles that you chose. Thanks. All of them are yeah. pretty cool. They're pretty cool, huh? It, okay, let's do a couple more because I, I think the styles that I chose are pretty fun to see the examples of different different types of drawings. You know, like and the, there's the definitely type of, no correct way. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So they're all, you know, sections, plans, or perspectives, but there's lots of different ways that you can render, that you can draw them digitally by hand, like Jorge said. This one we actually saw last week. I think it's the Desert Garden in Arizona. Not my favorite style. Nice. Man, everybody's so smart. I love this, this group. So this one is fun because it's more like hand sketchy with a little bit of color on top. The mood is different. Perspective, nice. All right, just a couple more. This one is fun too. It's kind of a collage aesthetic. Awesome, perspective. Okay, last one, very last one. What do you think? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that one was trickier. It's a plan drawing. It was more, um, more art than plan. Oh, I was wrong. Here's the last question. Okay. So this one's fun because you see this line, but you also see what's happening behind it. So this one was hard, it was a section because it cut through the landform, but it still showed you what was happening behind. That one was tricky. I tricked you guys with the last one. All right, let's see. Nice, nice job, Nada. And Hershey, yeah, Hershey was killing it. And who was number one? Benoit, all right, nice job, guys. I was very impressed, even for the people who weren't here last time, you got tons of them right. Okay, so 
With that in mind, we're going to do a perspective drawing together. So kind of in the theme of the presentation, this is going to be a streetscape. So it's a public space and we're going to draw our ideas for the street in the activity book. So does everybody still have these activity books that came with the packets? Recognize this? Yes. Yes. Okay, great. So I'll give you a second to find it if it's somewhere else in your room, open it up. And we're going to start with a perspective drawing because I think these are the most intuitive because this is how, how it looks kind of in real life, right? So what I'm going to do, let me try to switch my camera. Do, do, do. Okay, so you guys can kind of see my desk now, right? So this is the page no. of, no? What page is it? Sorry. It's page, well, page 32 gives you an example of uh, what the streetscape actually, the design was. So this streetscape is in Seattle, Washington, and you can see that it's on the water. So this was a seawall renovation where they were doing, redoing the street. Uh, and this was the design that the landscape architect made. It's pretty simple, pretty standard. You have your walking space. It's nice and wide. There's room for lots of people here. You've got benches, you have trees, and you have a light pole. So this is pretty, pretty standard public space. So the landscape architect led the design of the comprehensive plan for one and a half miles of the central waterfront. So this design went for one and a half miles. Pretty cool. Did someone say something? Um, what page number? Uh, page 32 is where you can see this. And we're actually going to be working on page 33 because um, they have all this space for us to design. I don't have that. Oh, you didn't get a packet? No. Okay. Do you have like any, a piece of paper or anything at home? Yeah, I do. Okay. I think you can probably still draw it, even though you don't have the packet that the, the central idea is just to draw the street the way that you would like to see it. So I think you can still participate even just with a piece of paper. So I'm going to open, these are all my pencils that I've collected over the years. I'm going to start with, remember we talked about last time that uh, pencils usually have on this end um, a number. And what number pencils did you get in your bag? I think there was a 2B maybe, 2B, 2H. You guys know what I'm talking about? See all these like, uh, numbers on the end of the pencils? Yes, um, I got 4B, 4H, and HB. Okay, 4B, <coughs> I've got a 3B, it's close. 4H and HB. So remember, the, the trick to remembering, what's that? So the trick to remembering the, what the letter means is hard is shorthand, or H is shorthand for hard. So the harder the lead is, the more difficult it is to make a line. Um, I'm gonna get out my trace paper. So it's like a, it's actually a lighter line. And then if you go up to HB, that's like in between hard and bland, which is what I try to remember the B. So it's a little bit darker. And then your 4B is, or bland, so it has the softest graphite and it makes a really a darker line. So if you can see that a little closer, let me write on that. This is, oops, this is for H, this is HB, this is for B. It's kind of like light, medium, dark in your pencils. So the way that I like to sketch is by starting with 
the lightest one. So that would be 4H. And then I come back with the darker pencils or a pen when I like what I've drawn, because it's easier to erase the lighter pencil. I wish I could zoom in with my camera. It's kind of far away. Okay, so we're just gonna start drawing. So it says, can you redraw this perspective? That's an option. You can, you can copy what they have on page 32, but really I would love to see what you guys have um, ideas about for public space. So I'm gonna just make up my own streetscape and I encourage you guys to do the same for what you would like to see. So it gives you some guidelines of uh, this is a perspective. So the vanishing point is somewhere in the middle and that's how you draw your lines. I'm sure you guys have had art classes that go over this stuff. So I'm gonna start by drawing the edge of the street. So in my idea, all of this space is all for pedestrians. Have to keep the street lamp on the pedestrian side because it would be a little dangerous to have a street lamp in the uh, in the way of bikes or cars in the streetscape. And the first thing I like to think about is who's traveling in this space. So I am a bicyclist, so I love to think about how we can make more space for people to cycle in cities so that you can get around and not have to be in a car. So right next to my pedestrian line, I'm gonna make a little lane for bikes. It's kind of hard to see. Let me get a darker pencil so you can follow along a little better. So this is my little bike lane. I might put uh, an example of someone riding in it. So the way that I like to sketch is I do light lines and then when I find a line that I kind of like, I come over it, and make it a little darker. Kind of looks like a scooter, not a bike so much, but this is my bike lane. So in my drawing, I wanted to have the bike lane separate from where the people walk because people on bikes can go really fast and sometimes it's dangerous to have bikes on the sidewalk. And then I want my bike lane to be protected from cars. So I'm gonna add a little curb So this is, I'm just gonna try to shade it in so you can see it a little better. So this is the edge of my curb. And then in between the bike lane and the lane for cars, I'm gonna have big area for trees. So let's see. I'm gonna redraw my light pole. So in this area, I'm gonna give my trees some big old tree grates. The tree grates are kind of a way to protect trees roots, but still have them open to water um, so that when it rains, some water can get down to their roots. So these are kind of big tree grates. And I'm gonna plant my trees right here. They're gonna be pretty mature trees. Oh, actually, I wanted to talk to you guys about this this week. Um, I think that sometimes there is a lot of pressure about 
drawing. Like you want something to look good, but you don't know quite how to draw it. And I think personally that there's nothing wrong with looking for ideas online. So, uh, which screen are you seeing? The wrong screen, dang it, it always shares the wrong screen. Let's go to this one. So, um, so I'm just gonna go to Google and we can straight up type in tree hand drawing styles. So if you're not used to drawing trees, you can look up examples of how you might like to render your tree. So these are some fun examples. You could do something kind of goofy and ethereal. You could do something more realistic where there's like shading where the shadows would go underneath the leaves. You could do just the branches if in your scene it's winter time. So I think that if you're feeling the pressure to draw something beautiful, first of all, don't worry about it. We're all practicing. I do this for a living and I'm still getting better at it. Um, but I'd say there's nothing wrong with kind of going online and finding styles that you think you want to emulate. So let's go back. These are pretty fun. These are fun. I like that first one that we found. This one's pretty cool. Oh, Pinterest, silly Pinterest. Ah. So I'm gonna try to do something kind of like this one. So stop sharing and go back to. I, mean, I think the drawing. key to, um, to drawing anything is just, as long as you can get your point across what you're trying to say with as little or no detail, or if you wanna add a lot of detail, as long as you get your point across, I think that's the best um, form of sketching. It doesn't have to really be perfect. Point. Like I, I have mine and it's, I do this for a living and I still don't feel satisfied, but at least I can explain what I'm uh, trying to create just by little or no detail. Totally. So it's, it's all just the style. For That's sure. awesome. I love that style, Jorge. <laughs> so just super fast. Or he's really good at this, guys. <laughs> I actually feel fun. intimidated every time I draw anything. It's intimidating, but it's still kind of fun to have somebody else look over what I kind of sketch or, you know. And then we're gonna, we'll do a share out afterward if you uh, mm -hmm. would like to share what you've done. I would love to see what you guys have drawn. Because, you know, Jorge and I do this all the time and we kind of get used to certain ways of doing things. And it's awesome to draw with people who have new and fresh ideas. Yeah, um, I think the biggest one for me is the internet. I look up a lot of styles as I'm working and it's just, it's a little refresher as to, hey, there's no one perfect way, but if you look at every single, like every single example out there, trying to become better and develop your own style. Yeah, totally. That's a really good point. There's a, there's a way that, there's a um, saying about if you copy something over and over again, or like if you copy someone's work over and over again, it's not like you're copying it, you're taking a part of what they're doing to create your own thing. Yeah, I really like that point. I like that. So like even even artists or, you know, the masters that you might see in a museum. Do you have a rooster in your yard? Oh yeah, you have chickens, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> it's like someone is screaming. Uh, that even like the masters yeah. that you see in museums, they started by copying other artists. And like where I said, it's not really copying. You add your own flare in your own style the the longer you practice. Good point, Jorge. The other thing I like to do is start with trees because a lot of times the canopy ends up um, 
kind of getting in front of a lot of the buildings. So in my example, I think I'm gonna add a little bit more sidewalk on the other side of the trees and then start my buildings, but um, you can't even really see a lot of the building spaces. My trees are probably a little bit too big, but you know, I always love a big tree. If, if you're going to make a mistake, have a bigger tree than a smaller tree. <laughs> Maybe this one is this building is taller than the others, and its roof line kind of shows more. Front door on the other side, double door. And man, in my drawing, I didn't even make any place for cars. I think that'd be an awesome place to be if there was just sidewalk, tree, bike lane, sidewalk. And you know what? I might even put another row of trees on this side. And it's always fun, or it's it's a good idea usually to start with the foreground, because I started with the background, and now if I plant a tree in front, it would kind of obscure all of the work that I just did in the back. So maybe for this drawing, I'll skip the trees and I'll just uh, focus on like benches. Maybe benches are a good thing to have in the public realm because people need a place to to rest and sit. And that's another thing that Jorge and I do a lot when we design benches, we'll look at examples of benches that we like from other places and we'll kind of tailor it to the place that we're designing for. So like in my drawing right here, maybe I'm gonna have a, a wood bench the top is wood and the bottom might just be like a concrete. The wood's kind of inlaid. So somebody just kind of rest and see the waterfront. And maybe we need some hip little trash cans. If you know you got people buying stuff at these businesses, maybe they need somewhere to pitch their recycling. So I always like to have two together. So there's recycling and, and just regular landfill trash. And I liked how Jorge kind of at the center where all these lines are converging, he did this like monument. What were you drawing, Jorge? Can you show us again? I think you're, are you on mute? I can't tell. Okay, sorry, it's my phone was on mute. <laughs> um, but so I'm drawing this like space needle at the front. It's gonna be this roundabout towards the center. I don't know if you can, uh -huh. Right here, yeah. that monument for cars. It's almost like think about it like it's a city center, and uh -huh. everything revolves around that one space needle. I um, love it. Yeah, so I'm trying to go futuristic here, but at the same time, not really. <laughs> Realistic future. Does anybody have near future? Yeah, yeah. Does anybody have anything they want to share right now? Maybe not like may, might not be complete, but just. I kind of want to yeah. see y'all's points of view so that I can I like get more that. inspiration for my sketches. You know, and that's one of those big things too in the, in the office. Um, at least in the office, it's open concept. So people walk around and people see what everyone else is doing. And it kind of gives you a little inspiration as to what you're doing based on what they're doing. So like everyone just shares ideas based on visuals. And I kind of like that. So kind of like seeing y'all style too might better me or 
my style, better you kind of thing, sharing just ideas out here. Love that. Anybody want to share their progress? Yeah, sure, but I only have trees, so. That's okay. Let's see. Oh, fun. Those are like, uh, like pine trees or I think you're back on, on mute, Naimat. Wait, yeah. Cool. Can I see, can I see it again? Sorry. That's looking great. They're beautiful. That would be really yeah, fun. So like and that's like a, yeah, go ahead. No, sorry. I was going to say that it looks like a straight, just like pure pine, fine, fine. So that's like, that's a cool perspective right there. Yeah, it's like a forest in the city. That would be so fun to walk down. See, that's what I mean. And that's what Jorge means. Like we're so used to drawing smaller street trees with a clear trunk. So we don't even think about stuff like that. It's really fun. Anybody else? Uh, I could share. I'd love to see. I can't wait, 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 wait. Okay. All right. This is what I got. Nice. Oh, awesome. Nice. Got a nice big bench. I love that. Some people. And you have. Mm -hmm. What's, what's in the back in the center? What is that? I like that. Uh, it's a fountain. Okay. okay, there you go. Is it a fountain that you said? Yeah. Cool. That's pretty cool. Love that. Wow, great job. Man, you guys are artists. Anybody, Anybody else? else want to share? Nada, I know you're a, a strong drawer. Do you I want me to share? Yeah. Sure. Um, uh, yeah, here. Here's, can you see? Or do you want me to move it closer? I oh, kind of yeah. wear, wear a modern stock type. I love it. Those are kind of like classic benches with the armrests. Awesome. Yeah. Lots of lots of vegetation in there too. I like love that you even put the bike lane like symbol on the bike lane. That's great. Super fun. That seems like a great space to be in. Yeah. Love it. Nice job, man. So cool. in your pack, did you guys to. did you guys get colored pencils too? Yeah, we got colored pencils. Cool. So I think I'm gonna maybe embarrass myself by trying, but I, I think we should try to add a little color, a little pop to these drawings. Uh, if you'd rather keep sketching in pencil, that's totally fine too, but I invite you to use some of the colored pencils, uh, <laughs> make it a little more interesting. All right, let's see. So like on mine for example just with the pencil you can't really tell that this is a wooden bench so i'm gonna go in and add some color to the wood slats And then maybe for my trash cans, they might be color coded. Like green usually means recycling, right? And blue for the regular trash. You can also use color to add some depth to your objects, right? So like in my tree, maybe most of my tree, 
this light green. And then I might use a darker shade where there's kind of that shadow element. Because right, the leaves are really complicated, so the sun wouldn't hit the same way on every part of the tree. I might even leave some white space in there for places that are really bright, that almost look white. And that's a fun thing with vegetation is that green is kind of a complicated color and you can overlay lots of different types of green to give something more depth and more character, right? And you might have more detail on the things that are closer to the eye. So like in this very first tree, I might even have some like stippling. Where'd my dark green go? So I might add some more detail to it. And then a little less detail in the middle tree. And then I might not put any of that detail in the far tree, maybe just a little shadow. Another fun thing that you guys can experiment with, uh, I learned this in a watercolor class once, that um, shadows can actually have a little bit of color. So if you look closely in watercolor paintings, a lot of times shadows will actually be purple, which is really fun to think about, you know, how can the color palette affect the overall mood of the drawing? So just because of the greens and the blues that I chose, my, my drawing so far is looking like bright, sunny day. But if I were going to draw it on a cloudy day or at sunset or something like that, you would probably choose different colors, right? When I lived in California during school, their bike lanes were always colored green. I'm just going to use that inspiration and make this a green color too. So it made it really obvious so that pedestrians wouldn't accidentally step in a bike lane and they get run over by a speeding bike. And then my tree grates, I'm thinking it'd be fun if they were like a, a rusty kind of metal look. I don't know if you guys I've ever seen a uh, Corten steel. Maybe I'll Google it real quick and share. Do steel tree crate. So, wow, these are fun. Look at these guys. So, these are like circular tree grates that even have little leaves kind of inside of them. So I love that. That's even more creative than what I was drawing, just the squares. It's fun because there's this pattern change with the tree grates um, kind of are on the sidewalk where the pedestrians are and, and they kind of break the rigid lines. They like break the rules, right? Of one color dark pavement and then sidewalk light pavement. This is kind of a, a fun trick that, that we do a lot that some people call slippage where you have an element that breaks the rules and it kind of goes on to a different element. I really like that inspiration, that's fun. And 
And then maybe I want to have a fun little pattern. Uh, paving patterns are something that I never really thought about until I got into landscape architecture. But just like the way, like what um, pavers we use, is it just going to be solid concrete or is it going to have, you know, a fun design in the pavement? Actually, I'm going to share my screen and again, and we can look at some examples of that. So paving pattern sidewalk. So, you know, some of these are residential. Um, so maybe we should say street. So you can do fun things like random colors and little squares. Wow, this is fun. So this is like a super graphic that somebody designed in plan in order to get these really perfect shapes. Um, you can do things like have spaces for an artist to come if you've got a big public space where artists can render something. You've got these like classic cobblestone streets that you see in some older cities. This is a really fun example of just using asphalt, which is really cheap, and then having like a painting pattern on top of it. Love this example. This is kind of more classic with the straight lines of different colors, the nice circular kind of perfect circle tree grate in the middle. So yeah, you can be really creative with even basic uh, basic elements. You think a uh, sidewalk is a sidewalk, but a sidewalk could look a lot, a lot of different ways. Oh, I know what I want to show. One time I went to, oh, this is fun. In Lisbon, they have, they make all these big, big patterns, but with really tiny little cobbles. So when you zoom out, it, it creates a pattern, but the cobbles are probably really only like, I don't know, two inches by two inches, maybe four by four. They're really small. This is super fun. There's also, um, Barcelona Street, uh, what do they call that? pavers yeah so Barcelona has this cool thing where they produce their own street tiles so let me see is there an example of somebody walking on it anyhow so these are fun because the tiles are all the same like this tile is the same as this tile is the same as this tile it just gets rotated so this is kind of like a, an example of a tile that gives the whole district its feeling. So if you see this tile, you know you're in the waterfront district in Barcelona, for example. There we go. So you can see they're pretty big, but because the city makes them all, they can replace them fairly easily. So anyhow, these are just some ideas to get you going. All right, and I know that we're nearing the end of our time, so I would love to see, does anybody feel like they want to share their progress? I'm just going to keep doing my little paving pattern. So I'd love to see if, I know that we just saw a bunch of really cool ideas, so I don't want to put too much pressure on you if you haven't gotten a chance to, to update your drawing. But if anybody who hasn't shared wants to share now, I'd love to see. Or hey, I know that you had a time issue. Did you want to show us your drawing and before you have to hop off? Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, so I couldn't find any color in my house. Um, I, my niece took all of them. So mm -hmm. I kind of just try to get a lot of uh, shading happening. But this is, I don't know if you guys can see the entire screen, but this is my drawing. I started off with some um, furniture on this, on the front, front of this uh, 
perspective and trying to get planters with a bench in between um, tall buildings that sort of don't go over the space needle that I have in the back. So that's probably one of the most uh, iconic uh, monuments in this street. Mm -hmm. um, I tried to get as much as I could, but there was just uh, not enough time, I think. <laughs> that kind of sucks. <laughs> Um, yeah, I know. You could drop yeah. forever, huh? That's awesome. Yeah, I feel like once you get into it, you kind of just don't want to stop. Right? I feel the same way. Yeah. I'm like doing this paving pattern now, and I'm like, oh, maybe we can just keep drawing. <laughs> yeah, you sort of lose notion of time sometimes. Um, but yeah, I, I something came up. Uh, I had to drop off my mom in the morning because her, uh, her car wouldn't work. So now I have to go pick her back up. I was oh, no. thought it was going to be at three, but... Um, so, yeah, she finished oh, off sorry, early, Mom. so I have to go pick her up. Okay, no worries. <laughs> no, it's totally so get it. Um, well, thanks for it joining us, It was good seeing you guys, um, and hopefully we get to see each other next month. All righty. See ya. All right. And well, y'all have a good weekend. And we're kind of wrapping up. We should be done in the next few minutes, but I'd love to see if anybody else has some progress to share what you've been up to. Uh, I know the ones that shared had really nice drawings. The, do the rest of y'all want to share what you have? I would love to see them because this is my first um, my first time in this uh, this workshop. So. I know that it can be intimidating, so mm -hmm. I'll go. Yeah, excellent. Oh, thanks, Randita. Um, so this, there's a road here, and this road is for the people who ride bicycle, <laughs> so we can produce less pollution. Love and right it. here, I th um, yeah, right here is for the people who can who rides their skateboard or hoverboard. Love and it. Here are the flowers, a tree, and here is a small restaurant. This is like old type of restaurant where, you know, people can rest and eat. Wow, I love that. Super creative. I've never thought of having a separate lane for like hoverboards and, and skateboards and stuff. That's a really great idea. I love it. And the restaurant looks super great. That's something that really adds a lot of value to a public space, right? Like it's one thing to be on a sidewalk, but it's another thing if there's like a place you can rest and maybe get a bubble tea or a coffee or something. I love that idea. Super great. Anybody else? Alejandra, I know that you've been with us since last time. Did you wanna share? All right, I'll do a little share then because uh, I know, it, again, it can be a little intimidating. So this is kind of what my drawing is looking like on my trace paper. So I've got my, uh, this like linear paving pattern kind of inspired by some of the things we looked at before. And my little wooden bench with my like ghost person that I didn't color in resting and looking at the waterfront. And then my green bike lane. And then I was starting to do my my tree grates and my trees these are some kind of nice leafy tree like an oak or a cedar elm in springtime they're really really green but I, I really liked Jorge's idea of having like a monument at the end around a roundabout after we get off the call I might have to finish my drawing to include that all right anybody else Okay. Well, there's no pressure to share. And again, when you're like just starting out and practicing, I know it can be a little intimidating, but um, I'd encourage you guys to, to keep on practicing. And the beauty of 
using trace paper, um, like I said earlier, is like, a, wait, where's my camera here? <laughs> is that, so I did this on trace, but then I can, if I'm like, ah, I didn't really like that design, I can take it off and start over. Or if I started drawing and I, I don't like the idea after all, I can just crumple it up and throw it away. <laughs> So I'd really encourage you guys to use that trace paper that's in your, that are in your packets too, because it's a great way to be quick and creative. Because sometimes when there's like only one sheet, it can be a lot of pressure, like, oh, you don't want to mess it up. And, oh, I better use pencil so I can erase it. But um, having trace paper can be a good way to test some ideas and discard it and test a different idea. That's something that we use in the office all the time for just quickly iterating and coming up with a lot of ideas. All right, well, I think we're coming up at the end of our time. Um, because we had so much fun with the perspective, we didn't really get to do the alleyway. Oh, I even forgot to update the text. But um, if you wanted the next challenge, this one to me is a little harder because we don't think this way in a day-to-day -day setting, but activity six in the booklet, so that's page 18. This is a plan drawing exercise that we might get around to next time, but if you wanted to use your trace paper and start um, sometime this weekend, if you wanted to practice drawing, basically it's an alleyway that you would do a plan drawing for. So there's a restaurant, there's an ice cream shop, a restaurant, and it's an alleyway that um, it says a small alley located in the heart of downtown off a popular street uh, is not very busy and dark in the evenings and sometimes considered unsafe by locals. The city has started a new program to revitalize the alleys throughout the town and they've chosen you to design this particular alley. So they give you some examples of stuff you could even include in your drawing to just get you going. Um, and they even give you some examples of different designs that landscape architects have done if you wanted to see a little bit of inspiration. But um, yeah, we'll leave that for another day. And I encourage you to practice on, on your own with the trace paper if you would like. Um, but that's all we have for you today. I'd love, do you guys have any questions about anything we talked about or wanted to share anything before we hop off? And I also wanted to ask you, um, we're thinking that next month, the workshop would be about designing with plants. Does that sound like something interesting to you guys? Do you wanna learn more about plants and how we design with plants or should we think of a different topic? The plants sound fun. Sounds fun? Yeah. Okay. All right. And I'm seeing in the chat, people are saying yes. Okay, great. So we'll work on a presentation for next month on April 24th, where we'll talk more about how we design with plants. I love plants. It's my favorite part of my job. They're like, you know, it's a big difference between landscape architecture and architecture is we design with living things. And, you know, how do you design with something that changes and grows? It's really fun. So I'll, I'll work on that for next month's workshop. All right, that's all I've got for you guys. If you have any questions or ideas, you're welcome to email either me or Jorge. Um, I think that Miss Janet has our emails too if you need them later. But um, I hope you guys enjoyed and we'll see each other next month. Thank you.